Welcome everyone. We'll call the meeting to order. We'll start with a prayer followed by the Pledge of Allegiance and roll call. Dear Father, thank you for our freedom and the privilege of gathering here today. We pray for wisdom in our decision making. Oversee the safety of our village employees and volunteers. We thank you for those people who take pride in the community and get involved in to make it a better place. We pray for protection and community support of our military personnel and their families. Thank you for sending your only begotten son into the world. It is your most blessed name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Baker? Here. Bassett? Here. Headley? Here. Barth? Here. Beverly? Here. Jones? Here. Thank you. You have in your packet the November 20th regular council meeting minutes. Does anybody have any questions or corrections? I think we approve the minutes. I'll second that motion. Roll call, please. Barth? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Jones? Yes. Headley? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Baker? Yep. You have in the packet. An approved bills list. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, <laughs> Mr. Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> Very last page. Order Inc. Refuse stickers, refuse pickup. What in the world is that? That's our first bill. Huh? It's our first bill. They pay ahead of time. Uh -huh. We pay ahead of time for the month. Is that what you're saying? We pay according to how it's billed here. She has the number of residents that she bills, she sends it to Whirler, and they produce a bill with the same number. <coughs> I match it and pay it. This is for what period of time? December. That's just December? See, when I saw that, I thought we bought Whirler a pickup. <laughs> I seriously did, and that was really upsetting to me. Okay, next one. <laughs> Uh, Ohio Peace Officers Training, Police, MH, Spanish, TRN Training, I guess. What's that for? MH is Monica Herman. Oh. And she did Spanish training. Okay. And that's a wonderful thing, but I thought, aren't you our Spanish guy? Correct. <laughs> um, I had six years, so I didn't go to any training. I know that was scheduled before. I see. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Um, that is all I have, unless somebody else has something. I move we pay the bills. What's the water topper for 600? Um, anybody's here for that one. Does anybody know what that is? First page. E.J. Prescott. <laughs> I'm not sure. I saw the bill. They're one of our vendors. Um, I'm not sure what piece of equipment or what that was. I can find out though. Anybody want to second me? I do. I'll okay. second. Roll call, please. Baker? Yep. Barth? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Headley? Yes. Jones? Yes. Thank you. There are no minutes from any boards and commissions, but is there anyone here that has any reports from any boards and commissions? Anyway? All right. So then we go on to council committee reports. Um, the finance helps the minutes in the packet. Anybody want to say anything about them? I reported at the last meeting. This was just the minutes. All right. Okay. All righty. So we will go on to the administrator's report. That's in the packet. <laughs> I do have a comment on the the bid for the restroom project. I don't know if that was the time to talk about that or not. It's on the back of the administrator's report. 
now. And I, I know there. I know there's two bids, and one's local, one's not. I, there's not much of a difference. There's less than a two percent difference between them. I, I would think. I know the architectural firm said that uh, they would. They were recommending the company that was out of town, but for the cost difference, I think we should keep it local and yeah. hire the, the local company. I would concur with you on that. Uh, we have talked about that, and I have talked to Jim about today, and uh, that I think we should hire borderline. Do we need legislation brought, Troy, to authorize that? Yeah, I mean, you need to authorize a contract with them. That's the difference. Yeah, I mean, not. I mean, authorize the contract. We just have to decide that's who we're awarding the contract to, and it's just like anything else. I mean, they have to notify the two parties, you know, that they were or weren't, because it's. I mean, the standard is lowest and best bid, and we got a right to take into consideration the locale. And as a practical matter, it sounds like Jim spoke to him, and it's not the other contractor. Not it's something that's going to be offensive to him. It doesn't mm -hmm. sound like. So you need a motion, or you just put together some legislation. Well, just put together some legislation and bring back uh, to enter into a contract with borderline construction. <coughs> I assume the architects, like always, will be putting together their kind of standard contracts we can look at. And, they will. Yeah. So. Okay. I have some Whatever questions the council on decides. the way we're building this. Okay. Uh, and, and no reflection on you, Jim, because I realized that this was going on long before you got here. But. Uh, we're putting a sub base footer in and we're running block up out of the ground. Block does not like being buried. Jim mentioned that. Yeah, that you can happens. tweak that and put a change order in according to Jim. So. And I also heard we're doing a standard concrete block. I thought in different times I spoke with you, we had talked a textured block, which is like three cents more than a standard block. Split face, yeah. Well, I spoke Another with, change order. I spoke with Borderline, and you might want to double check with them, but I think the, the reason why they are a little higher is because they had included split face block on the building. That's why I want to make sure we're doing apple for apples, but either way, if that's the cost difference between the two, I'd, I'd rather go with the local company. There's going to be all local plumbers, local electricians, local contractors, construction-wise. Yeah, with I either should, award, they would I have been all local. That, you know. Sure. I agree with you, and too, about not having the block down below the And, the and uh, we've got bolt-to-the-wall uh, potties. And in a situation where it's open to the public like that and the kids can get in there and jump up and down on them, I think they should be pedestal potties. Uh, bolted to the wall, I mean, 200 pounds can jump twice on there and it's off the wall. Yeah. Jim mentioned that before you come in. Yeah. They had, he wanted pedestal base potty. So. Why the hell don't anybody talk to me? That way they it was know. just a conversation <laughs> before the council meeting started. Before, before you walked in. I still like the, I still like the <coughs> wall mount. It's easier to clean. You mop right underneath them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, 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 if you're standing on a, a wall mount or a 300-pound person jumping up and down on either toilet, you're gonna it's porcelain. It's going to break. Cleaning purposes wise, it's a lot easier to clean underneath. I mean, every uh, commercial building you go into, 90% of them all have wall mount uh, toilets. But on when it. we when we first started to engineer this thing, and and I was I had a lot closer grip on the thing, and uh, in speaking with Diane, we talked about this one day, is we needed compartments, lockable compartments, so that you open that up. Whoever our custodial service is, open that up, and there's a hose in there, so you could spray that thing down. Floor drains. I don't know if any of this has been incorporated into this thing or not. All oh, that's been discussed. Okay. Added, adding an extra drain just for that reason. For floor drains in each section. There's supposed Correct. to be drains in the first place. Correct. Right? There, yes, there is. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as the uh, wall mounts go, I've discussed that as well with uh, the architect and with um, uh, Borderline. And we can put in a faux pedestal just for support. So you can still get behind it for the cleaning because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the mayor had mentioned that as well. So we can still have the cleaning aspect where you can get a mop or something back in there. But then you've got the support, but the plumbing will still go into the wall. So Yeah, well, and, and, and that's a lot of these new truck stops that, that are being built. They're that way. They're, they're bolted to the wall, but they also set on a pedestal. Right, right. I think we should insist on that, and that's just yeah. a... Another change order too. So yeah. there's still black walls inside, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, 
I'm excited to get this restroom project yeah. going. I'll say that. Are they going to put a 60 day um, deadline in the contract or? There 60 days to complete. Uh -huh. uh, when are you going to start it? Well, I, not till we get our <coughs> legislation passed, that's for sure. Right. But I mean, I that, think that would that be that asking a lot of somebody to, to uh, do uh, blah, all that block work in the winter and freezing winter. Okay, because uh, the other company said they could get it done. I, well, so I didn't know. anybody can, but but if you've ever had brickwork done or block work done in the winter, where they add calcium or, or an antifreeze or uh, to the to the mortar mix, uh, you get a white frosty film that comes off of it for two three years. You have to keep pressure washing off, and and that makes it so that the paint will not adhere to it if you're painting your block. So um, what would be a reasonable completion date? Well, I think uh, uh, before spring. The start date. <laughs> yeah. The start date needs to be, you know, like first of March, and you got to have it done by the end of April or something like that. I'm just throwing that out there now. Okay. So it can be used, get it open before. It's still six yeah. days. It just depends on when it starts. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, you're going to have to, you know, erect a, a some more of a tent and keep it heated and. Uh, okay. I just don't want it drawn up. Yeah, we don't want a six month, but right. we don't want like to have it when the park opens. Yeah. Sure, definitely have it yeah. completely yeah. ready to go. When's park I mean, open? Before the park. I mean, right. the yeah, kids will start going there as soon as the weather gets nice. And in the Gary spring. will be down there, though, too. When, when yeah. does the park open? Usually May, April, May. No, before that. March. And March. The first time it starts to get warm. Oh, well, yeah. Spring fever. The kids are out yeah. playing or down there running around in the park. Yeah. So, yeah, about March, April. Yeah, ball games. Okay. Gary Bowser about mid, I think middle or end of February they start. Okay, yeah. well that you Jim can figure out. Want it done right, right, that's for sure. Yep, right. that's right. Great. Glad to get that going. Do you have anything else in your report, Jim? Does anybody have any questions for Jim? I liked your report. Yes. Thank you. Uh, just a couple things just came up. We finished the year at just over a thousand tons of trash. Uh, I know that had been shared with you before what we did through the year. Um, leaf pickup loads are at 112 loads thus far this year. And we started today on the Clearview stormwater discharge. Uh, our contractor, Mr. Savage, really uh, got going on it and we got a late start. Had to stage everything, shot some elevations, and they're nearly halfway done already. So. So it should have been there a couple days probably. Tomorrow. Yeah. Maybe maybe be done tomorrow. At the earliest early he moves quick. early Wednesday. He's good. So man. and our, our guys were out there all day obviously assisting, so okay. great. I had a real quick question if you're not if you're not. Um, choice one. We were gonna check with there uh, out there on the industrial drive. Okay. Did you ever find out and I could I ask you about that when we were talking on the phone? I got any farther. I sent them an email a while back and I haven't heard back from them yet. Really? Okay. Yeah. But I'll just I'll keep bird dogging them and go ahead. I want to remind everyone or that this week's the first trash pickup for Whirler. Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, so just make sure everyone's aware of first trash pickups Wednesday. So don't be sending trash out. And I think <laughs> I finally get tomorrow. to put out my recycling tub that's been full for <laughs> like three weeks. So my <laughs> Yeah. But they're taking recycling, right? Yeah, my Even area both? My area, is, area. My area the yellow area is and getting recycling and bulk items tomorrow. Or, I mean, Wednesday, I'm sorry. Green is Green's the 20th, and it's tra uh, for, for bulk items. Right. And recycling uh, recycling's yeah. tomorrow, and I don't remember the other two. Good. Anxious to get that recycling picked up. Yeah. <laughs> We did get a, a recycling schedule from um, the Defiant Solid Waste Management, and I didn't think to bring it and announce it, but I know they were going to have the schedule in the Tribune, and it's you can definitely pick it up for anybody that's interested uh, from the utility office, and I would imagine she has that in, details on the website also mm -hmm. for anybody that knows. They're going to come, I think it said January and February, at mm -hmm. County Solid Waste over at Grace United Methodist Church parking lot. Till we get things going up and, and going here well in the village. So I was happy about that. Anything else for Jim? 
All righty, thank you. So we will go on to the solicitor's report. Just a couple of things. Uh, I think I wasn't at the last meeting because I was on vacation, but the CRA legislation, that's been done for a long time. Jerry did take it to the school, I understand. We explained everything to them, what we were looking at. They wanted, the, like, between one meeting to basically go through it all and everything, and then the intention is that they'll pass their resolution at their next meeting, which off the top of my head, I'm not sure when. It's next, next Monday. It's next Monday. And so then at our next meeting, presuming that they give us the blessing, we should be able to do the first reading on our CRA, the actual legislation, to enact it. And I asked Cheryl to get that to each of you in advance so you can read it for yourself before. And I previously sent that to you, right? I did not? <laughs> I thought that I especially did when I was on uh, vacation. That's the one call that I made was to my office, and I thought I emailed it to you. I'll give it to you first thing. Well, you know what? <laughs> give you that and you can make copies. Um, unless you want me to email it to you, that way you can... I'll have a copy. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll do that. So that's that. Um, the income tax legislation is not the big deal. It's getting the contract finalized, which I think is about there. And so what I would propose is most likely is I'll try and get that circulated well before the next meeting. And then at the next meeting, we can do a first reading and potentially if there's no questions, pass it as an emergency to get it effective before the beginning of the year. And then the Verizon Tower offer, um, Cheryl had given me the file to look at, and she brought this up before, we had received from a couple of different, a couple of different times where they had made offers basically to pay us a lump sum in lieu of our month, monthly payments, right? In lieu of our monthly payments. I have looked over the majority of that, and I will tell you while it looks good on its face financially because you look at it and you say well we get X amount a month for the next 20 years 15 I think it's already been five or something and then it automatically renews for a couple of periods of time and if you add the numbers up it's not it's not that bad and we're getting all the money up front now the difference really in it which they don't really highlight in all their promotional materials about all the advantages is right now they only have a lease that at some point unless we renew it will definitely end where if you give them a permanent easement, it's theirs forever. And so that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to put $150,000 in your face in order to acquire a, a permanent interest in the, in the real estate out there. So um, I could try and break down the numbers a little bit more. My personal preference, not that I would have a vote on it, is that we'd rather maintain the flexibility of owning the land and being able to do what we want to do even if it's Nobody in the room sitting here is dealing with it 40 years from now or whatever. So that's that's where that stands. I do have the, the file and have gone through it, and I can break down the numbers and explain a little bit more. But that's that's why they make those offers. They're trying to... Does anyone it. feel a need for Troy to do that? Are you satisfied with the way I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Leave it like it is. Okay. Yes. That would be my call. Okay. I okay. just hate to see him waste his time. Yeah. yeah. So, Troy, on the Sherwood income tax legislation, has Sherwood agreed to the contract? They have. We're in the process of putting it together, but they'll have to pass legislation too. Okay. So, I tried calling uh, Steve Hubbard, who's our solicitor today, and I couldn't catch up with them between our schedules or whatever. So, um, see when they're, but they have to obviously, because it's a contract, so they got to authorize it, we got to authorize it. Okay. So, um, we're trying to hurry that along, obviously, to get it in before the end of the year. All right. Does anybody else have any questions for Troy about anything? All right. Thank you. We'll go with the uh, departmental reports. And I see that for the police department, <coughs> we have a patrolman here. Yeah. You have a report for us? Evening. Um, I'm filling in for Chief Stickney. He wanted to let you know that he's busy. He's doing a prisoner transport. Um, but at this time, there's nothing that the police department has to report unless you have any questions. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. All right, thank you. All right. Thanks. We'll go to the fire chief. I have nothing to report on the fire side. EMS side, I'd like to thank everybody that contributed to the uh, Christmas for Kids. We're around today picking barrels up, I know that. And. We had a run right before this, and I didn't get my stuff together. I'm not sure when distribution of stuff is. Okay. So you picked up the barrels, but if there are some individuals like myself that have not got their they things in the barrel, the I can just take it to the fire department? Yep. All right. 
There might be other people like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Does anybody have any questions for Scott? Mm -hmm. right. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for coming. Thank yep. Thank you very much. Okay. <coughs> and um, did you have you gave the EMS report also? Yeah, they didn't have it. All right. That was with EMS. And I see you have two people starting classes for the yeah, EMS. So class, yeah. that's sure. great. Did the class start yet? Oh yeah. Okay. They're about two months into it, I think. Great. Good. All right, and no park director, it looks like, or park representative. All right. We will go on to the fiscal officer's report. Uh, mine is short and sweet tonight. I have the um, statement of cash um, starting December 1st, the income tax report, and the utility report, their collections for the month of November. That's it. Okay. Any questions for Cheryl regarding any of those reports? Okay. I did not even know that I had all that stuff under my report. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote notes down below. Christmas in the village. That is going to be December 9th and the parade is going to start at 5.30, line up at 4.30 and it's going to line up right back here um, behind the Hicksville Bank in that parking lot and the parade will go down Edgerton Street to Main, Main to High, High to the Land Office in Santa Claus is going to be on the deck at the Land Office to see children. So that would be a great thing to go to. And then we have the cruise through going on down here every night during the week. But on the weekends, they have such events as visit with Santa, carriage rides, uh, entertainment, mini village, crafters, food, festival of trees, and a s'mores shack. And then on Sunday, December 10th, there's going to be fireworks, massive fireworks. So you can just drive through Monday through Friday and see the lights. They're absolutely beautiful. Uh, Mike and I worked down there last night. There are people come from Detroit, I mean, all over the place to see this display. I mean, not just Ohio, Indiana, Michigan. They came from, like, Tennessee. <laughs> They just drive around and check out lights. So it, it's pretty impressive. So if you get a chance to go through, or if you know someone that can't drive or get out, offer to take them through, because it's absolutely beautiful. Can and I add something to that, Mayor? Yes. Um, the Christmas Cruise Through Board is dealing with the fair board, because uh, they take 75% of what's made and only give the Christmas cruise through people and everybody the 25%. They have a meeting January 9th, and Denise has uh, had it all over her Facebook page or cruise through page that anybody that would want to come down and be at that meeting and help sway the fire board into a better deal uh, so that this can continue. Um, because at the, at the point that they're at, I mean, it's, it's all the people that are volunteering. Everybody's a volunteer, and everybody's spending their own money while the fair board takes 40 some thousand dollars they walked away with. Uh, so I would encourage anybody to attend that meeting. It's in Brunersburg at the EMA building, January 9th, uh, but the time I'm not positive on. Um, yeah, you wrote it on my calendar at my desk, but. Have it right here. They have a three year contract, right? So right. now it's up. Oh, so that's, yeah, they had no idea it was going to be this big. Nobody. And, and it, uh, from talking with different people uh, between here and Defiance, it doesn't sound like uh, the board wants to negotiate. They're, they're kind of set where they want to be or where they feel they need to be. Um, and Denise is already speaking with. Uh, Glaze Village, Paulding County Fairgrounds. She's already speaking with places to move it to. We can't let that happen, though. No. 
agree. It has to stay here. So they're taking the expense side, though, aren't they? The fair board. Power bill. Yeah. Power expense side. So it seems kind of they get seventy five percent, twenty five. You know, a fair split would be. 40, 60, or 50, 50, I would think. You see, they let them store all that stuff that was somewhere in the yeah. fairgrounds, too. Yeah. But well, still, people are going to have to put some pressure on them. Yeah. We, people there would help a lot. Yes. As support. many as we could just pack that EMA building and, and let the, the fair board know that, that hey, Hicksville is behind this. Uh, we don't want to lose it. Well, it's We're good for the county. It's good for the whole oh, area. Right. It's good for everything. Well, maybe the commissioners could put a little pressure on it. Well, they have met with the commissioners already, and uh, and there is a commissioner here if he would like to say anything on, on the subject. Welcome, Mick. Hello. Let me put you on the spot, big boy. I'll be at the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think it would behoove the village of Hicksville to have a pretty strong showing. We don't want this thing to go to Paulding County. Mm. Why would we want those people to to um, get the sales tax? I mean, obviously, as a commissioner, we're worried about sales tax. And people come from all over the place, and they're hitting gas stations and McDonald's and whatever else along the way. So it's important for our community. It's important for the county. I would have hoped to have come here tonight just to listen and not be a part of a governmental meeting where I had to make a decision. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here. You're welcome. Your chair's still up here. <laughs> well, let us know the time, January the 9th. I got that written out, so probably an evening meeting. I'm guessing. I'm thinking 6:30, but I don't know. I'll I, try. I'll try to go. I got a paper on my desk, but it's at the EMA building in Brunersburg. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, the paper could put something in there. Oh. I'll wait okay. for Diane to give me the time. Okay, I'll give it to you at, right after the meeting. Going on with my report then, um, additional funds for the CIC. I was at a meeting a couple weeks ago where they were asking Hicksville for 16000 instead of 15000 and I did not <coughs> remember to present that in the budget, but the City of Defiance is increasing their amount for like by 5000 and. Honestly, they have spent a lot of time in Hicksville um, on with some of our businesses and, and a lot of our projects and a lot of our loans and you know and I, I think it's well worth it to add a thousand dollars to the CIC payment in two thousand eighteen. And I guess I would just ask you if you're okay with that. I mean it's not yeah. anything we're doing tonight. Yeah, in the form of a motion? Yeah, that would be great. I would make that motion that we increase the CIC contribution from 15000 to 16000 I'll I, second that. I have noticed a big difference in the support we're getting from the CIC. Yeah, Wish we had known earlier we could put in the budget. I know. I, when sh next year when Cheryl amends the budget, we always have to straighten out a little bit of something. Okay. She can make that change. But, um, roll call, please. Baker? Yep. Bassett? Yes. Headley? Yes. Barth? Yes. Beverly? Yes. Jones? Yes. I guess while we're talking about 2018 uh, budget already, the nuisance board uh, has received bids on a house to tear down. And we didn't put any funds in the budget to tear down a nuisance house. And so I would like to ask that you also include $10,000 in the budget uh, to tear down a house that's, on Smith Street. That's just for Smith Street? Mm -hmm. Wow. So, and then that would be assessed to the property taxes. Mm -hmm. So. And the ten's not set in stone. Could be less. Right. I thought you took bids. <coughs> um, I thought we did too. <laughs> but I mean, that no, nobody told me that part, so. Yeah, I, so. I mean, that was just uh, rounding it off to the nearest thousands, okay. a thousand dollars, but, yeah. Well, I 
that we should do it. We get it back to the taxes. Right. We want to clean up the town, so. That's what you're going to have to do. So I'll make a motion. I'll second that. Roll call, please. Headley? Yes. Jones? Yes. Bassett? Yes. Beverly? I'll say yes, hoping that that can do two homes instead of just one. Barth? Yes. Baker? Yes. 7.30 is the time of the meeting, Ron. Oh. Did you hear that, Pete? Yeah, I, I did. I'm You're writing it right now. All right. Because you're going to make a big Can we ask which house that is? Can I ask that? No. Yeah. I That's not as big as the one we down by. Six in the morning. My. Just a little long story. <coughs> Oh. Labor, Holland, oh, oh, it's really? a killer. It's a dump yeah. chest. We got to away from that. It's good out of the lake. Burn, otherwise, it's been 17 grand. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, there's, you know, that takes care of the agenda items. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to address council? Mr. Bodwell, did you want to address council? Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, how. Uh, um, there you go. That'd be great. Yeah, now we'll lower. No, Cheryl encouraged him to come to a water and sewer committee meeting first, but I don't think he wanted to do that. Hi, everybody. My name is J. Uh, Initial J. Winston Bodwell. I'm one of your newer residents here at 310 West Arthur Street. I bought the uh, John and, and Madonna Kenner home on Arthur Street. Uh, I want to report to you that I've never felt more welcome than I have in Hicksville. And I want to thank you, everybody, every one of you. And I, now I'm putting a face to the people I voted for because they're <laughs> all in this room. And so it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, I, I just can't express enough that I've been super welcomed and I love this place and I came here to die. I'm dying. And my wife is 60 years old. I'm 77. And so she's going to live on here for a while. I hope longer than I do. And, and she also likes Hicksville. Uh, we moved to Ohio because she is going to be going for her sixth college degree at the University of Cincinnati online. She is really Dr. Wendy Bodwell but, and, and a former professor at the University of St. Francis. And uh, now she's going into a totally new field at age 60 <laughs> and going to become a nurse a psychiatric nurse practitioner. Uh, so, so, so we moved to Hicksville, you see, because the out-of-state tuition in Fort Wayne was prohibitive. So, so instead of paying the out-of-state tuition, we moved here to become part of this community, and I want to be part of this community as if I'd lived here all my life. And, and frankly, you've made me that welcome, and I appreciate that. But I come tonight with a complaint, two complaints. Uh, very serious complaints. I live on Social Security, $1,362 a month. Yet my sewage bill has been, for the five months I've been here, has the least it's been is $99 a month on top of the water. And that is unaffordable for a retiree. My wife works part-time in Fort Wayne and will pay income tax to the city on, on her income, but there's no income coming from me to the city. And, and it's just driving us batty. Uh, uh, my last bill was $99 for sewer alone. And that's just totally unreasonable. Now, I know many of you, because I've talked individually with one of you, say, oh, it's the damn EPA. 
Well, it doesn't matter. We, we have to accept what, whatever they do. And so I'm pleading with you to get a new amortization schedule where it isn't killing people like me that are living on Social Security. There are five houses for sale within one block of my residence. People are fleeing Hicksville. And I'm sure you don't want that to happen. You want people moving in. And your sewage bill is unreasonable and unaffordable. It could be amortized on a different schedule to where it wouldn't hit us so hard. I understand you have to make expensive things. They, they're doing it in Fort Wayne. They're boring a huge hole in the ground in Fort Wayne. So it's not just Hicksville that's being hit. It's everybody in this area. And I understand that. But you see, I can't afford on $1,362 to make a $430 house payment out of my Social Security and then on top of that meet a $150 sewage and trash and, and, and water bill. It's just unaffordable. And so my wife and I have started to think that maybe we're going to move out of Hicksville if it doesn't change. I have ordered the water department this morning to put in a new meter. I've hired a plumber who came and said that we had no leaks anywhere in the house. I've installed low flow toilets in the downstairs and the upstairs. We have no dishwasher. I spent $1,000 for a new washer dryer that are, that are easy on water. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Bodwell, um, I was given, when I got here tonight, your billing history and that kind of stuff, and maybe the administrator is aware of this or has anything to add. There's no one here from the well, water department, but... I, I have one other complaint. Okay. Hear me out. And that's with the sidewalks. I drive this or walk with a walker What when I can stand up. Okay, you guys have gone around town and marked X's on, on sidewalks that are simply cracked. They don't affect a wheelchair or this electric wheelchair. But in the 300 block of, of uh, Main Street on the north side of the road, there's this much of a dip where the sidewalk has collapsed into the ground and it's actually tossed me off of this. I also got tossed off on the south side where it's not marked with an X where the tree has raised the sidewalk this much. Well we are addressing sidewalks in town constantly. Uh, the zoning inspector has sent out notices. The reason why he placed those X's on the sidewalk is so the homeowners just know that in the future, you know, they need to watch that spot where it's just a crack, just well, the crack, so they can watch it and make sure it doesn't hump Yeah, up. but on the, on the opposite side of the street in the 300 block of High Street, where you marked X's and the sidewalk's been replaced, right across the street, the sidewalk has dropped vertically this much into the ground and to go through it on this but I was going through it on this because on the other side of the street unmarked is a tree that's raised the sidewalk that much and it'll kill my engine to even try to jump over that yeah. so well, we we have sent out a lot of sidewalk notices but we give them a reasonable period of time to get those repaired and you know it's it's well, five months I've been owners. here, and I've five months I've gone up that sidewalk, and it hasn't changed. Yeah, well, those people have a certain amount of time to repair this. I'm sure you've seen other sidewalks repaired around well, town. My neighbor had to replace a cracked sidewalk that I could drive over quite easily, but I can't drive over a hole in the ground or concrete that's sticking up this high. And, and, and please, don't take my, my voice. I'm very hard of hearing, so I talk very loud, and I apologize if it's too loud. I'm really, uh, 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 you know, just wanting to be as friendly as I can about my complaints. Yeah. But, but, but uh, you know, something's got to be done about the sewer charges. They're unreasonable. Mr. Bodwell, my name is Mike Barth. I'm the head of the Sewer and Water Committee, and I have not talked to you before, and I just found out about your information tonight. And we've asked people to call. They can call me or Ron and Sheila on that committee. You know, we've dealt with these situations over the years with the burden, of course, of having the, the residents in town help uh, pay for all this new infrastructure that we're building. And we're in a 
finishing up phase one, going into phase two and three here the next couple of years. Um, things don't last forever. You know, and it takes a long time, and we didn't push to not fix them in a proper, timely manner and over the course of years. But we're kind of in an impasse right now where we have to fix these things to keep our water fresh, uh, our waterways clean, and our, our treatment plant operating efficiently without overburdening it. And we've um, worked on that for many, many years. I know I've been on it for seven years. And I know it's an impact on the residents with, with the water. I know you had a... I've even you've had an increase my water softener so the water <clears throat> tastes like... Well, I won't say what sure. it tastes like. <laughs> but, but I've shut off my water softener to try to... But no, no, the latest report this morning is, well, Mr. Bodwell, you used 8,000 gallons again last month, 8,000 gallons the month before when there's only my wife and I. Sir, it costs me $5 every time I flush the toilet. Oh, yeah, there's something going on with the system, and that's what yeah. bothers me about this whole thing. I mean, you should not be anywhere no. near 8,000 gallons. No. Not even close. No. My wife and I live here in Hicksville, and there's two of us we use quite a bit of water. We're always run the, the washer and dryer, and we use... 3,500 to 4,000 gallons of water a month. Yeah, I mean, there's something wrong. The, uh, the the city utility said, we'll hire the plumber, so I spent $55 on a plumber to come, and he said, well, Mr. Bodwell, your water meter is shut off. It's showing no leaks, and then he went all through the house, checked the toilets, did everything. Have you been given the dye strip? Yes, and tried that, no leaks. I mean, it's just unreasonable. Well, I'm sure that we're willing to try to see what else we can Thank help you. Thank you. That's solve all I problem, could possibly so. ask for, but um, I wanted to come visit no you anyway. No. Oh, maybe we're the welcome. next time with no complaints. <laughs> You're always welcome. Thank you for coming. We'll, we'll try to help you however we can, including our sidewalks. And Thank you. We want it good good shape for everybody. Oh, by the way, uh, the former uh, the former people that owned it, Madonna Kenner, was your local artist and painted a number of paintings and sold them in art galleries all over the state. And when we moved in, we bought her estate. And so we're donating uh, for, for public showing to the library in their new building over 60 of Madonna's paintings uh, that are going to be on, on hopefully a month's show. And then we're going to donate some of those paintings to the land office and the historical society. Wow, mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah, so, that is great. Trying to be a good citizen yeah. of Hicksville. Thanks for letting us know. I'd love to see her work. Okay, thank, yep. you. thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else uh, in the audience that would like to address council about anything? All right. Uh, Diane. Yes. Uh, I just wanted, just by listening to what was said tonight, the county will have uh, the demolition program again next year. We have allocated the funds for that. So don't be afraid to um, come up with a property or two and, and give them to us whenever that time comes. Okay. So. And I'm sure you'll get a notice. Thank you for letting us know. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, you want to address this, Matt? No, go ahead. I didn't know if anybody wanted to. Is this is a good time while Larry's yeah, here. Yeah, that's what I yeah. <laughs> But You are somewhat Run. hooked up with Chairwood Mutual. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, they sent us all pictures of where you guys are coming up for your pedestals. Yes. right against our meter pits and stuff making it near impossible to do repair work and stuff on them of the ones that I've seen on the jobs I've been to uh, the break that I was on on uh, Mill Creek uh, last week and uh, the water department people were, were telling me the location of, of where your pedestal was set and and uh, which was right tight against the meter pit and and I said, well, tell them to change it. And, of course, Underground says, mm -mm, we're doing it by the print. That's the only way we're doing it. Is there any way we can work with? Uh, I can get with Bill from Geotech and get with him on that. Yeah, well, I'll probably see him tomorrow. What is the amount of distance you would like it from the pit? Um, at least four feet. I've got, Sometimes it might be in a spot where... That's what Ron just showed you, Larry. This one is so tight with two driveways and the confluence yeah. of the way they come together. And see, They would have had to go behind that mound of dirt, and I don't know where they started boring from. 
they may not be able to get behind that further back. So some of it is, and to be fair, I think there's only about a half a dozen of these so far. Right. They've done pretty good. Yeah. They really have. I can get with Bill. You know, I mean, within Reno, you know, you know how it goes because it's such a wonderful space. Sure. But, and, I mean, basically his statement was to me and, and super polite bunch of guys on that utility company. But uh, he said, hey, we can't change nothing. We're doing it the way the print says. And that's the truth. And, you know, like, it, uh, yeah. Right, but we as, and I'm saying we as a community, but sense have to protect sense. our own utilities. Right. And, and when, I, when I seen you here tonight, I thought, and knowing that I had this picture in my packet, I thought this will be a, an opportune time because you can get something done. Oh well, yeah, I, I'll get with you. Appreciate it very much. I think Thank the you. biggest thing, Larry, is if we have a problem and we're that close to you, you're going to have a problem too. So <laughs> yeah. We don't we don't want that. Right, exactly. Larry, I want to thank you for coming and oh, keeping updated on what's you know yeah. going on in County. Oh, no, I think that crew is doing an excellent job. They are. I agree. How yeah, far along? Complaints. Are they about half done or? Uh, they're getting. Uh, I would say the zone green done. Well, pretty much to the west side. Mm -hmm. I mean. They're a good crew, and if you really do have any problems, they will fix you up. I know I had a couple of complaints here, so I had one. You know, of course, you're going to have a little bit of mess, but as far as, you know, when it's all said and done, they're going to see you and put straw over. Mm -hmm. yeah, but boring's, a be boring's the best way to go by far. Oh, gosh, yes, but, you know, yeah. when accidents happen, you know. But, yeah. For for the uh, mile of uh, miles of conduit they've put in so far, and like, what, six? Little accidents. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty good. Well, I know they had one of us with the frontier and locate your cable. I was in on that one too. From the from the three ladies in the condo there, they all called me and wanted me to make it all better. <laughs> well, I want to apologize to someone because I got a call at home about it, and the number that was left to return the call did not go. It went to an Indiana person, and I. <laughs> And somebody's lifelines weren't working and everything, and I, I, I could not return the call of the person. I couldn't catch the name. It was just a fuzzy connection, and so I apologize to whoever it was. Thank you. Council? I would like to go into executive session for personnel. I'll second that. Roll call, please. Baker? Yep. Bassett? Yes. Headley? Yes. Barth? Yes. Beverly? Yep. Jones? Yep. Any motion to be taken afterwards? No. We're all going home, Pete. Okay. <laughs>